Hey everybody, welcome back to The Turnout. I am your host, Aloy, and it wasn't that long ago that I posted this big thing about like, I'm a Quibi insider and they're gonna send me like updates and I'm gonna let you guys know what's going on. And at that time, I was pretty excited about the platform, but it is uh, pretty clear right now that uh, there was definitely nothing to be super excited about. Um, there is some good stuff on Quibi, but I did want to kind of break down some of the pros and cons that I have experienced with Quibi and kind of give you my final verdict as somebody who has been trying to like heavily engage with this platform over the last couple of months. So first off, if you don't know what Quibi is, it is actually short for Quick Bites. It is designed for creators to bring you a short amount of content so that you can kind of take it in bite sizes, quick bites as it were. And the whole idea is that it is supposed to fill in the gaps in between when you are consuming bigger content. So the first thing I'll say, the first pro that I'll say is that the money that they spent in order to get these names attached to it, I think it helped with the publicity of the app as a whole. So having all of these big stars out there repping for you, I think it really did get more eyes on it than it would have had had they not spent a lot of money on these big names. And the second pro that I'm going to say is that not only are there big names, but some of the content itself is actually really, really good. I really enjoyed Flipped, which had Caitlin Olsen and Will Forte. Surprisingly, I didn't think I was going to like the punked reboot with Chance the Rapper, but I kind of did. It was kind of really fun. I also very much liked the sexology show, which was kind of like a sex expert, a sex therapist kind of going through and asking uh, questions to normal people and answering questions that people have. Kind of like the thing that used to have Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew on it. Um, I'm trying to a sex line, I think it was called. I'm trying to remember now off the top of my head. But like, it had some good stuff on it. Uh, the movies were less enjoyable. Uh, I guess let's get to that. Um, anything that was longer formatted being cut into like small little chunks, it, it honestly, it messed with a lot of the flow. Uh, I found that it was more disorienting than anything. It, it would be like, oh, I watched eight minutes of this movie and now I have to wait till tomorrow to come back for the other eight minutes and then eight minutes and then eight minutes and eight minutes. And um, I started to get frustrated. I started a couple of movies that I didn't finish. Like it, it's pretty frustrating. There's going to be a bunch of cons, by the way. What I noticed is that it made it frustrating to watch longer content, but even shorter content felt long. I guess is weird to say. For instance, Flipped, which was actually, I think, my favorite on the Quibi platform. You know, it's a comedy. Uh, you get them in like 10 minute bites, which is exactly what the platform is supposed to be. And each of the episodes is actually pretty well paced and everything. However, I found that watching this 10 minute clip, it felt like watching 30 minutes. And there's a big reason for that. Is And this is probably the biggest con of everything con I probably used in both ways the entirety of the the entirety of the app Quibi is designed to be used on a mobile device meaning you cannot use it any other way it won't let you use it any other way which means while you're watching a show you can't do all of the things that you would normally do during a show like I check my email and you know I check into social media I might you know research something oh Will Forte oh that's kind of interesting let me see what he's doing you know recently while I'm watching the show a lot of people have trained themselves to be able to split their attention and um, this does not allow you to split your attention now I got around that a little bit by using Quibi on my iPad and while so then I could use my actual phone but not everybody has an iPad it's it's a really crappy way to do it I tried to airplay it to my TV I tried so many different things that I could do but the only way to watch it was either on my phone or on my iPad and uh, that is crappy like, stop it. One thing too that I thought was going to be interesting was that it was going to kind of open up a new style of direction and it was going to make, it was gonna make these creators and directors of these TV shows and movies uh, be more cognizant about the platform that they were creating for. And with some of like the shows, you could see that that was kind of, like they definitely did. They would have, if you turned your phone this way, it would split screen it. If you turned it long ways, it would show it to you regular, but also might split screen at times. And I saw some shows take real good advantage of that. For the most part though, 
not everybody did. They were just like, here's the thing I made. Um, when you turn it, if it's meant to be watched this way, if you turn it this way, just zoom into part of it and you end up losing contextual clues and things on the sides. There were a lot of really crazy like camera angles and cuts and, and side by sides in a lot of the shows that I was watching. And it, and honestly, that part made it so that not only did I need to watch it on my iPad, but I needed to watch it on my iPad long ways uh, so that I could see everything. I think Flipped, again, it's so weird that I keep going back to Flipped, but I feel like Flipped did the best with the portrait way of watching it, where they would, they actually did try to do lots of creative cuts and whatnot. It wasn't just focusing on a certain spot. And they used that for comedy, which I kind of dug. So I ended up watching a lot of that show portrait style because I actually felt like watching it landscape uh, took away some of the fun cuts that they were using, but almost no other show or movie tried to utilize the platform the way that it was intended to be done. So you're probably wondering why I don't have a bunch of screenshots of like how this worked and what it looked like and all that stuff. And I'm just telling you, and honestly, it's because I did not renew and uh, I don't plan on really engaging with uh, Quibi anymore. It was a major letdown and I'm definitely not the kind of person who's just like, oh, another streaming service, who needs that? Like, I'll give anything a shot because if it will add value to my life, then I'm all for it. Uh, Quibi, uh, I would say, actually takes away from my life. <laughs> so I went and I watched a few of the things that I liked. And uh, when I was done, I really, I had no urge to go back. Uh, and this is in the age of like HBO Max just came out and you know, all the Apple TV Plus and everything is out there, Disney Plus, and there's so many other platforms that are out there now that I don't know how Quibi was going to succeed uh, unless everybody was on board 100%. If every show and movie could have been handled the same way that Flipped was, <laughs> essentially, because Flipped was awesome. And if you get the chance to watch it, it was a lot of fun, even though it felt so much longer than it was. I don't know, it was just weird, but I really lo I loved all of the performances on that show. I would say for the rest of it, I wouldn't even say take or leave. I would say leave. I would say don't get quibby. <laughs> and it sucks because again, I was super excited and I was hoping that like updates and stuff like they, like I signed up to be an insider and they didn't even send me insider stuff. Like I was like, oh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to like let you guys know what's going on. And like, I never really got anything. I didn't get any like special previews or any special anything. So like, what was the point of being an insider so that I could just say that I was, I mean, I guess that's like clout attached to it, but uh, yeah, Quibi is, it's not good. It's not good. The pros and the cons. There were two pros, and that's the people involved, and some of the shows are really, really good. But the whole rest of it is cons. <laughs> so that's my take on Quibi. I probably won't be talking about Quibi anymore. Uh, sorry, I guess, Quibi or not. I don't think it's going to affect anybody's life either way it, it, when Quibi kind of falls. I think it's going to go under pretty quickly here. But... I want to know what you guys thought. If you guys have tried Quibi, let me know if your ideas and thoughts about it line up with mine. Uh, and if maybe I missed something, tell me what I missed because I don't I don't think I did. But otherwise, don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you always know when the Turnout releases a new video. And I've been your host, Aloy. This has been The Turnout. Thanks for showing up.